This is $20 million in cash right here. Here's $300,000 in singles, $30 million in $100 bills. Whether it's cash, gold, or digital bits, we all know that money makes the world go round. And what that money is worth depends on trust. Trust that the engines that power it all won't fail. I'm Jake Ward. And for the first time, National Geographic is going to take you inside the system. Places that you're not allowed to bring a camera. Straight into the vaults of the world's largest stash of what you want, need, and bust your butt to get. Money. One of the places that truly controls money is the Central Bank of the United States, the Federal Reserve. They count it, store it, move it, inflate it, deflate it, destroy, stabilize, lend, and buy it, and make a profit off of it. But above all, they protect it. And it's not just cash. For over 80 years, armored vehicles have navigated Manhattan's narrow streets, carrying millions and sometimes billions in gold deposits in and out of the one Federal Reserve Bank trusted enough to guard almost one quarter of the world's entire gold supply. You heard it right. Nearly 25% lives here at 33 Liberty Street. Today, a hefty deposit is on its way in, and this driver is the first line of defense. For obvious reasons, we can't really tell you his name, but he's not alone. His partners are armed, and the vehicle itself is like a vault on wheels, able to withstand bullets, even hand grenades. Delivery is a well-choreographed and deadly serious exchange between the driver and the Federal Reserve's police force. This small stack may not look like much, but if you tried to put it in the back of your car, you'd blow out the tires. There are a lot of guns here right now. It's, uh, it's kind of nerve-wracking to be around it. The gold is met at the loading dock by the Fed's vault auditor and its custodians. We have over a ton of gold right here, and street value today is over $55 million. Are you still into gold? Like, does gold have an effect on you emotionally, or are you sick of gold? You, you never get sick of the gold. Yeah, really? It puts a smile on people's faces when they come down to see it, yeah. and even puts a smile on our face when, when we're down there working with it. Just, it just never loses its luster. Our camera crew is making a normally smooth exchange a little hectic. They're obviously a little nervous about it because this is, this is a first. There's not a lot of hanging out with the gold just sitting here. After sorting out who's allowed to go inside with the cameras, they get down to the business of making the deposit. There's an almost sacred ritual that handlers go through when moving gold. It's all very quiet and solemn, no chit-chat or small talk. The armored truck company's drivers are fully responsible for the gold as they descend 80 feet below street level to the world's largest underground gold vault. Only at the entrance does it officially become the keep of the New York Fed. And this is the way it's been done since the Fed first opened the vault in 1924.
The New York Bank is one of 12 that make up the Federal Reserve System. Together, they're like the ultimate piggy bank, a place where your bankers bank. And if there's a financial panic, the Fed acts as a lender of last resort. That creates a kind of trust in the entire system. So from the beginning, Fed banks were built to look imposing, like fortresses of money. The New York Fed's vault rests on bedrock to handle the weight of the gold. Engineers dreamed up an ingenious way to guard it. A 90-ton steel cylinder that revolves vertically in a 140-ton steel and concrete frame. When it rotates, it drops three quarters of an inch to create an air and watertight seal. No one person is given all of the combinations or keys to the various locking systems, so someone is always watching. So now there's three of you. It takes three people to open the door? Yeah. I see. Two vault custodians and an auditor. Welcome to about a quarter of the world's official gold supply. Just one of these bars is worth 640,000 bucks. So we're talking upwards of $380 billion. The bars are weighed on a good old fashioned balance scale. Once everything's on, yeah. you're gonna turn the crank. Okay, okay. It's gonna be a little, not that difficult, but a little bit because all that weight will be on it. It's a critical step because each bar is slightly different, making each deposit unique. The scale measures down to one one hundredth of an ounce. That's about one third of a paper bill. Still, that's worth about 17 bucks. Ron here has stood as guardian of the gold for 40 years. This is the year in which the bars were cast. This is the purity. And this is the maker of the bar, who the, the assayer. And this is a serial number. Each bar has to have its own serial number. What happens if you drop a bar like uh, this on your feet? Oh, if you don't have this on, you'll be in the hospital. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm about to pick up $640,000 is a life-changing sum of money. Whoa, whoa. It is so much heavier than you think it's going to be. Gold is very dense. Wow. So whose gold are we handling right now? Country, central bank. Do you know? I mean, can we tell from what? Oh, no. We, well, we can't tell. You can't tell me? No. I see. There are rules about that kind of thing. The Fed's discretion and intense security are so trusted that few depositors have ever even asked to see if their gold is still here. So let's say that, you know, one of these bars got out of the vault, God forbid, and out into the street, and somebody melted it down. Would there be any way of identifying this gold again? Not if they melted it down. No. But if they tried to sell it like this here, it, they would find out. For thousands of years, people used gold as money. And why not? It's shiny, it's pretty. And like the man said, once you melt it down, it's untraceable. Or put another way, it's the perfect recyclable money. One of the places where this precious metal is given new life is New York's Diamond District. On these two blocks of New York, $24 billion in cash changes hands every year. We've negotiated access to get behind the storefronts to see how everybody from low-end street dealers to high-end brokers are dealing in gold. Hello. Sir. Alexandra Rogovsky has a hefty chunk of that 24 billion inside his bag. Ah, uh, got some gold, got some silver bar. He has gold to sell. 
a lot of it. And he's about to find out what it's all worth. So I was wondering if you can tell me what I can get for this. Dmitry Nezhinsky is one of hundreds of brokers who work New York's gold district. Business is booming. When there's a financial crisis, people tend to look for security in gold. Here is 18 carat. Yeah, it goes up and down. But now it's better than other times because it just came came up from 50 hundred, so you're selling it at the right time. In 2010 alone, the price of gold hit record highs 22 times. We pay top dollar for your gold. The gold comes in from all walks of life, so it helps that Dimitri can speak five languages. You come back here, okay? Some data that are talking about 14,064 dollars for 14 karat gold. Then you have 10 karat gold that can give you. $1,800 for that. The coin, this coin is the pure gold, right? So this is $20,900. I'll give you $11 difference so you can come back to us. Thank you very much. Dimitri? Yes, hi. hi. I'm Jake. Hi, how are you? Very nice, nice to meet you. To meet you. Thank you for having me. Sure. And how, how much do you see in a day? How many people come through here? In a day, it depends. Uh, it could be anywhere from 5 to 50, 70 people a day. What happens to the gold once you've got it, right? You, bought, you buy a day's worth of gold. What do you then do with it? Once we buy gold, let's say we buy This is about twenty twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 worth of gold. OK. Once we buy this gold, we melt it down to a small brick, and then we have it tested and sell it. Can I, can I watch you? Sure, it definitely. Down? Sure. I'd like to see it. Now, most of the jewelry we have is 14 carat. The nooks and crannies of the gold district are full of places like this. Millions of dollars flow in and out. Some, like Dimitri's, even have a foundry in the basement. How are you, my friend? No! Oh my god, you said this. The mayor, this guy. Please, man, I wanted to melt it. Not ready? Okay. It's kind of an amazing thing, right? This is, you know, people's memories, their treasured heirlooms. Some of it was in the ground a thousand years ago, some of it was a pair of earrings a thousand years ago, and now it's all been melted back down again, and someday it will be somebody else's heirloom. It's crazy how liquid this really is. So, are you sick of gold? I mean, do you, like, do you still like the look of gold? I love it. You do? I love it, yeah. You do? Yeah, definitely. Who doesn't? The gold that leaves here is recast and reborn as another person's treasure, continuing to make money along the way. And sometimes that treasure is a lot closer than you think. Every couple of hours, trillions of dollars change hands. All that money used to be backed by gold, but not anymore. Today, our buck is backed by a promise from the U.S. government. The fact that it all works based on trust alone is simply taken for granted. Hi, good morning. I'm trusting this driver with my money and my life, right? I'm trusting that he's not going to cheat me. I'm trusting he's going to take the fastest and most efficient route possible. And I'm trusting him not to kill us both. Ooh. That kind of trust is at the heart of the financial world. The whole system is built on the assumption that our cash and our credit cards and even our bank accounts are worth something. But what I want to know is, who's in charge? I've come to Washington, D.C. to meet the head of the entire Fed system. You know, he's been dealt some of the most difficult cards in the history of finance. You said that Mr. Bernanke just happens to be the most powerful nerd on the planet. The Fed that was responsible for this, sure, the Fed played a role. Federal Reserve Chairman.